Welcome back to another FPV Inside Look. Today we're going to be breaking down the new Rush FPV ESC Blade Series. And these are definitely some premium ESCs. I personally guarantee that these ESCs will help your flow of electricity. You might still want to practice flying. The Rush All-in-One ESC is a 30-30 hole configuration, weighs 16 and a half grams, can take up to 6S battery, and with the metal cover comes in at around 7.2 millimeters. Now there are three types of ESC in this series. There's the Sport, Speed, and Super. The Sport is a 50 amp with a 60 amp max uh, current. The Speed and the Super are both 60 amp with an 80 amp max, but the difference between the two are the MCU or the microcontroller. What that does is it takes the information from the flight controller, translates it, and tells the motors what to do. A faster response time from that basically means that your drone can respond better to situations. Of course you still have to tune it, but it should smooth out your ride. Before I get into the pros and cons of the ESC, I want to talk about the power filter board they included. It's a little board with three MOSFETs on the back, and then we connect two capacitors to it. It's going to slide right underneath where we normally connect our battery. And a lot of us, if not most of us, put a capacitor right there also. If you're unfamiliar with what a capacitor actually does, it's like a small battery, except you have to charge it up. It'll store whatever energy you put into it. So if you put a 4S battery in it, that's the voltage it'll hold. If you put a 6S battery, it holds that. The cool thing about capacitors is it can discharge that energy a lot faster than our LiPo batteries. So on big punch outs, when you're drawing a lot of energy, sometimes you get a lot of noise in your video feed or your drone itself has some noise it has to filter out. And capacitors can help do that. By having two capacitors there as a backup as you're sucking energy, it should really help clean up your noise of your video feed and potentially the performance of your drone. I really wanted to stress test this ESC, and the best way for me personally to do that is to head out to the racetrack and chase some cars. There I'll have to accelerate quickly to keep up and sustain those speeds a lot longer than I would during a normal freestyle. I currently have an Infinity stack from Newbie Drone, but I'm going to pull the ESC and drop in the Rush Blade and swap some of the pin placement to make sure it lines up. Always check your pin placement when you're running different name brand ESC to flight controller. You will fry something if you don't check. Now let's head out to the track. I'll keep the audio on for the drone a little bit so you can really hear it scream as I'm trying to keep up with some of these cars. That was great. The ESC performed really well. I was able to keep up with most of the vehicles out there, and as you could hear from the audio, it was just screaming. If we want to break down some of the pros and cons, first of all, the metal cover around the outside I think is a great idea. I've been seeing that a lot more in ESCs, 
it's when it's metal it's a good extra heat sink it helps prevent solder splash while you're building it and possibly bridging something on accident and during a crash it can help keep it protected it came with some nice accessories also it has two different size soft mounts in it, the two capacitors, power filter board, and the wire that goes from the ESC to the flight controller. Came with a backup with an opened pin, so you can just plug it into the pin. It makes it really simple when you're mismatching your brand like I am. Now this ESC supports 96K PWM. Basically, it makes your drone more efficient. <laughs> it could help with your power flow and actually save you a little battery life but honestly we're a little power hungry when we fly and its main goal is to make it respond faster creating a smoother flight for you they also say it can help prevent mid throttle oscillation if you have a problem with that and of course the power filter board is a nice added feature i had clear video and the drone was flying smooth they obviously spent some time developing it so they thought it would be needed for what we're doing with our drones but the power filter board that you add on the back may turn off some of you from buying it because it will make your build a little bigger. And if your frame is already pretty tight for the internal components, you may have problems fitting it inside of there. It is of course a premium ESC, as I said before, and it comes in around $67. If you do happen to get some splash solder underneath that metal cover, that could be really hard to get out. And I don't know how you take the metal cover off if it's just double sticky tape or something else. I didn't want to try. The solder pads on here are also a little small. If you're used to solder pads on ESC extending all the way to the sides, that's not going to happen here. But I didn't really have a problem building it. Just something to consider. As you can tell, I'm pretty happy with the ESC. It's probably overkill at 50 and 60 amps for most of what we're doing, but as far as an ESC goes, it's okay to go bigger. It's not gonna hurt anything, and it will protect you if you just like to pin it, or during a crash if you accidentally pin it. I've been running Rush products for over a year now, and it started with their Rush Tank VTX that I picked up on a whim to do a review, and I got good response from it because I said it was just as good as the TBS Unify. And I stand by that statement. It is just as good. And they're also innovating, creating some great products like their Rush Tank Mini. And I've been running their Rush Tank 2020 stack for almost a year. And it performed well until a crash when I blew out the ESC. But other than that, it's been for performing great. And I can't wait for Rush to have the flight controller that attaches into this. I've already seen pictures on their Instagram and it looks great. A lot of simple plug and play features and it looks like they're keeping the robust quality that they put in the Blade series. That's gonna wrap up this FPV Inside Look. Please make sure you subscribe to help support me. If you ever have questions on this stuff, you can leave a comment down below or find me on Facebook or Instagram at NorCal Drones and I'd be happy to answer some questions for you. Until next time, keep ripping packs.